this is Khajiit and he is bound and determined to try to be in this video today. So I gotta give him some love so he can get his feel and go on. But we got him a little over a year ago. He came to the shop and showed up, but we also have another shop kitty there. And he tried to come in and he just wanted to be cool. He just wanted a place to hang out, but uh, our shop kitty wasn't having none of that. He likes, you know, to rule the roost and they would squab. So we went down to the pound and got a cage and we were going to take him to the pound. And then I saw his face and I was like, oh no, he's way too cute. And we also saw that his ear was clipped. I don't know if you can see that or not. His, his little ear was clipped and, and we know a local lady who, when she finds strays, she takes them to be um, neutered or spayed and she would get them all their, um, their rabies shots and she would feed them um, in an area behind her home, which was not far from the shop. So we knew that he was one of her cats. He'd been already neutered. He'd been, you know, had his shots. There was really no reason to take him to the pound. Look at it, a beautiful face. And he is the sweetest lovey-dovey cat in the world. Isn't he? But I gotta make a video. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Jacanic. Uh, it's getting that time of year. Fall is coming and it's time to clean up those yards. The Amazon that we live in here in Arkansas, it is just, everything has grown like crazy this year to where I have not been able to keep up with it. And I know a lot of other people have not been able to keep up with theirs. And the easiest way to do it at the end of the season, once the leaves start dying off a little bit and you can actually see where you need to take care of business is to put a brush cutter blade. <laughs> All right, cause you, you gotta chill, okay is to put a brush cutter blade on your trimmer. Now today we're gonna go over some of the most common um, trimmers, the Shindawa, the Husqvarna, the Steel, and the Echo, how to um, put a brush blade on each of those safely, um, a trick about buying a brush blade, and uh, hopefully this video will save you time, money, and frustration in the future. For this demonstration, we're going to be using the most four common trimmers I see at my shop is a Husqvarna 128LD, the Shindawa T242, a Steel um, FS55, and a Echo SRM225. All right, so we're going to go over the most important thing you need to think about when you are buying a blade for your for your trimmer to make it fit. Now the gear head, depending on the adapter that it already has on, on the gear box or the adapter that you're gonna buy, it has to be a certain size hole in the center of your blade to actually fit on your gear head. So there's only two sizes that it can be and that is a one inch or a 20 millimeter. If you buy a, a blade that has a 20 millimeter hole, you cannot make the blade, si the blade hole bigger. So that will not work if you do need a bigger size. But if you buy one that is a inch, they do have reducers. So I'm not gonna go over all the different kinds of blades that they make because it really depends on what you're planning on cutting. Project Farm does a video that, that shows all the different kinds of brush cutter blades and which one's best for whatever project you plan on doing. So if you do buy a blade, now this is a nine inch blade and this is a eight inch blade and you can't tell much of a difference, but you can see that there's a half inch on each side. So that also depends on how many cc's of power your trimmer has. I mean, uh, most ones you'll want to stick with the 8 inch, 7 inch, 8 inch blade maybe. Um, if it's a really heavy duty trimmer, at least 25 cc's or more you can push the 9 inch. Um, but if you do and you find out that you have a smaller area that, you know, than, you know, the 20 millimeter area, you can get this reducer to, uh, to make it fit on, on it. And I'll, I'm going to show you that on one of these trimmers that we're going to do. Okay, so we are gonna start out with the easiest one first, which is a steel. Now steel has three pieces that you're going to need in their kit to put a blade on. You're going to have a cupped splined washer, a lock nut, and a cup to protect the end of your shaft. To uh, start out, we're going to take our head off. Now, if you remember in my last video, we're going to stick something, there's a hole in the back of the gear head here. And we're going to stick something and turn the head until it locks into place, which I already have this one loose, so it looks like, yeah. And then it's actually, if you're on this way, it's lefty loosey righty tighty. If you're standing on the other side, this is backwards thread, so you will go the, the opposite direction to, uh, to loosen this head off. So 
once we've got the head off, we're going to just turn it over here. And on the back of a steel base here, it's already got this lifted up portion that you can see for the blade to sit on. And this one actually is a one inch. So we're going to be able to put the blade straight on and we'll just we'll go ahead and use this eight inch blade right here. And it fits perfectly on there. Now, when you're putting a blade on, what you do need to realize is which way it needs to turn. So on a lot of blades, they'll actually have some writing on them. That in that case, most of the time, the writing goes towards you as you're running the trimmer. Now, it does not go towards the ground. But another way to know is that the trimmer head spins this way. You know this because your line cutter is right here on the back of the shield. So whenever you put your blade on, you know that the, the cutting teeth need to go facing the area, the way that it's turning. So it's going to turn this way, and that's the way the teeth and uh, the cutting angle is. So we know that it goes this way. Once you have that on, it has a splined cupped washer that goes over the splines on the shaft. Then you have this, cup, this cupped washer that will cover everything up and protect the end of your shaft. And then you have a left-handed lock nut that you are going to tighten down. And once you get it hand tight to where it's not gonna come apart, you wanna hold everything together so it doesn't come off that little lip, you're going to stick your screwdriver and if you have it this way you could actually just stick it in the hole and lay it on it like that and then you're going to get your tool and you're going to tighten that down into as as tight as you can get it and uh, that's the way you do it on the steel it's pretty simple so the next easiest one in the scheme of things is the Husqvarna um, trimmer we're going to take the head off just like we did on the steel on the uh, back of the gear head here it has a hole on the other side the steel's on the left side the Husqvarna has on the right we're going to stick something in there until it's locked in place and then we can unscrew the head once we have the head off we're going to just whoop, turn it on over here and the Husqvarna thankfully already comes on the back base here on the gear head with a raised section to put your blade on and it also is a one inch so we're going to like we did with the steel now i'm sure there are actual husqvarna pieces to put a blade on that there is a blade kit i have never used one i have always just used the pieces that come with the other kits because it's just easier it actually takes the same uh cupped splined washer as the steel does um, and locks in place and then also you can use the same cup as the as the steel now the only thing that is different is the threads are different because it, it doesn't have the same threads as a steel it has the same splines but not the same threads it does have the same uh threads as the echo though so let me make sure i got all that lined up there so once you have your steel washer and your steel cup on you can put a echo nut on the end of that and that is also backwards threads as you're if you're holding it this way so like before you're going to tighten it down hand tight you're going to stick something in that hole in the back and then you're going to make sure you get it as tight as possible so the Husqvarna is really easy too Okay, so I now have my Shindawa, my personal trimmer, my T242. Um, first thing we're going to do is take the head off like the other ones, the Shindawa and the Echo. You have to find a hole here on the side of the gearbox. Line those holes up. Once you have it all stuck together, you can just spin the head off. All right, we're going to get it turned over. Okay, now on this one, this is a really old T242. So um, on the newer trimmers, they have shafts coming out of them. This one, it looks like there's a shaft coming out, but there's actually not. It is part of the kit for the speed feed heads because it's universal and it fits everything. So these older Shindalas actually have a bolt that holds everything on. Now this was an X 
uh, the X series of the Shindawas was the ones that held blades. So it came with the attachments to actually put a blade on. Now the steel and the Husqvarna are really simple. The Shindawa are not. They have multiple back pieces to put um, a blade on and, and they, throughout the years, they changed this spline, this inside spline. Um, so you're going to have to actually look up your, your Shindawa. A lot of times if you put an X at the end of it, that'll be the brush cutter one. So you can find your pieces that way, but you're going to want to find the piece that, uh, a blade can actually sit on that has this, this lip raised on it. So, um, yeah, the easiest way to do is, is maybe call your local shop and, and see if my, they might have it or something like that. But, um, cause they are, they're all different. So fortunately I do have the pieces. I have the back base. I do have the cupped washer. Both of them have the right splines. What I don't have here today is the actual M7 bolt that's going to hold it all together. I do have one of the little cups, so I'm going to, I'm going to be able to sort of show you exactly how it goes, but I did find my blade in the garage that I've been using for these, but I didn't find my bolt or my washer or, or I'm not my washer or my uh, cup. So I had to bring this cup from work and I did not have another bolt, which was really weird, but I will be able to show you how this goes. So the back piece um, with this race section is going to go first on the splines. Then we're going to put a blade on. And on this blade, this is um, just an 80 tooth blade that, that I use for the brush around the house. It's got the markings on the top so I know which way it goes so I don't have to worry about that much because on my trimmer, my extra piece of my shield came off and I don't have a cutter on there anymore so I need to actually take care of that. So once I have the blade on, I have this washer that goes on the top and then you will put this cup, this cupped washer, um, cup part, I don't know exactly what it's called, but anyways, you'll put that first before you put your bolt in, your M7 bolt, and it'll tighten everything down, and that's an you know excellent way to do it. Just make sure you get everything real tight, stick something in the side. Now, every time you put one of these blades on, make sure that you put a rag around the edge that you're working on, because if you slip, you do not want to slice yourself. So... That's how you put the Shindaba one on. It's not very hard either. Um, next one we're going to do is the Echo, and it's a little bit more difficult. All right, so last but not least, we have the Echo SRM225. Now, the kit that you're going to have to buy to fit an Echo fits multiple units. I mean, it's got a list this long of different units that it will, go, that it will work on. So I'm going to put this kit and all of these kits in the description box below so everything you see here even a couple blades you're going to be able to find really simple just look down in the description and and i'll get you to where you need to go on how you can get a brush cutter going so but unfortunately the echo the reason that you have to buy the blade kit it does not come with the adapters with to uh put a blade on when you um get a, a trimmer, a, like a, a homeowner model Echo trimmer. It doesn't have this raised section on it to actually put the blade on. Um, you also need one of the cupped washers, you know, the cupped washers that helps protect your shaft. And also you're going to have to have one of the reducers if you have a blade that's a one inch. You can get this, like the blade that comes in here, I think it is a um, 20 millimeter, but if you wanna use a different blade, you will have to get a reducer. So first thing we're going to do is take the head off. Like on the Shindawa, we're going to go into the side here. So we can, uh, there we go, lock it in place. Now you can see the adapter came off. This one already had one on it. So somebody's been running this one with a blade before so we won't need those pieces but we are going to need the um blade reducer and we're going to need another shield so when you have the echo it's nice it's got this really sleek shield you know with the cutter but unfortunately if you try to put a blade on it the blade just 
is going to hit the shield. There's no way to go around that. Why they didn't lift it up just a couple more inches and make it a little wider, I have no idea. The other models did, and that is one one flaw that I see with this. I mean, I don't know why they did that so they could sell such an expensive blade kit, but they did. So first thing we're going to have to do is remove this shield. And that's going to be okay because it comes with a new shield in the kit that is very safe for a brush blade. And that's what we're talking about here. I mean, really, we want to be safe, right? I mean, when you've got a blade spinning at, you know, hundreds of RPMs, thousands, it's a little scary, just saying. All right, so now that we have that off, we are going to open up our new kit. In the new kit, we get a new shield. We also have another handle that we could put on just in case we want that. It's going to come with a new bracket to go on the bottom of the shield. It's going to come with the correct adapters to put um, your blade on with and a bunch of nuts and bolts, some cotter pins, a harness. So it's got lots of good stuff in here, but um, today we're just going to go ahead and show you how a blade goes on. We don't need none of that. We've got all the profiles out here. And since we already had one with the uh, um, raised section for the blade, we don't need to pull that one out today. And we already have a reducer depending on which blade we want to use. So this kit also does come with a um, eight tooth 20 millimeter blade here. So um, this kit, you know, it, it lists for around $65. But the blades normally, you know, they're 25 to 30 bucks. It's worth it. Also, if you have a PAS system with the uh, um, split boom attachment, I will put that in the description box below so you'll know how to get that attachment if you would like. So all you have to do is, you know, unscrew a little knob, push a little button, pull it out, push it in, you're ready to brush cut. That's pretty awesome if you did get that upgrade when you bought it. All right, so once we have this off, we're gonna put the new shield on. We're just going to line that up right there. We're going to put this back on. We're going to put, um, actually, I think it came with new bolts, but we're just going to use these new bolts just for this demonstration, or these bolts just for the demonstration. And we'll tighten this down. Also, I had some people that were having some confusion with my wish list. Um, I had a couple people that uh, went to my Amazon wish list and they bought some things, but I think um, it is really confusing when you check out. And I did not know this, so I didn't even say anything in the uh, in the uh, top description. When, I, but I did add something because unfortunately, people were buying things through the Amazon wish list, but when it goes to checkout it uh, ships it to their house instead of um, their desired destination. So when you go to check out on the Amazon wish list, if you're buying anybody anything, just make sure you see where it needs to go or where, you know, you want to get it sent to because they'll uh, send it straight to your house. If you're not too careful. So, all right, now that we have this tightened down, we're able to put our back base back on our gear head. It's splined. Um, we do have a blade with a one inch hole, so we are going to use the reducer. And we're going to put the blade on now. The um, writing goes up on this one, so we're not going to be able to see it. On the Echo one, it's got this really heavy duty washer with this lipped area to protect everything. And then the nut is backwards threads. And we're going to stick something in the side, tighten all that down. Now, the good thing about Echo, it even has an extra precautionary measure. They have a cotter pin that goes straight through the bottom of your shaft here. And uh, make sure there's no way that this blade could ever fall off. So once you have this shield on, this is an 8-inch blade. You could even go with a 9-inch blade. So it's worth it. Totally. I'll have the kit down in the description below. And... Uh, now you have no excuse. Now you'll be able to cut everything down. I think he's laid claim to the cougar. What? 
So a few things I do want to go over is, sorry folks, if you have a curved shaft trimmer, you cannot use a blade on your trimmer. And a curved shaft means if you see it curve at the end, the only time you can use a blade, a brush cutter blade, is when you have a straight shaft. Um, other than that, it's dangerous. You can't do it. There's really not many ways to even to put it on. So um, sorry, that will not work. Now, I did not go over some of the most other common trimmers that people have, which are the Craftsman's and um, some of the Troy belts. I um, don't recommend putting them on many of the Troy belts. Now, Craftsman's are made by Troy belts, but some of them are a little bit more heavy duty. There are ones that have a split boom in the center and the Poulans that have a split boom in the center. I'm going to put some, uh, um, uh, some, links down below to actual, you know, split boom attachments that you can put on or um, attachments for just the end of a, of a Craftsman trimmer that you can put on yours. I don't do it that often, so I, you know, don't know much about it to explain it, but just in case you need the links to get there, it's pretty much probably going to be the same design as what we, you learned today. Hopefully this video saved you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Thanks and have a great day.